एथिक्स इंटेग्रिटी एंड एप्टीट्यूड इट इज वन ऑफ द इजिएस्ट पेपर ऑफ योर मीन्स बट एट द सेम टाइम फॉर अ लॉट मेनी स्टूडेंट इट कैन बी वन ऑफ द टफेस्ट पेपर एज वेल राइट so how is that even possible that the same paper can be very easy and at the same time very tough that is because the questions asked in this paper which forms your gs4 for your mains what happens is the questions which are asked are very basic are related to what we see every day what we are involved with in every day for example the emotions we feel of anger happiness so on and so forth we see or are a part knowingly unknowingly of some uncalled for things like corruption which we see happening all around us probably right and we also being a part of that system right so it is something which we see going on everywhere not just corruption some ethical things also good things also good bad and the ugly so that is exactly what is asked over here so these are some things which we know already but then why certain students in fact most of the student find it to be the toughest gs paper of mains that is because you know the questions are very grassroots questions related to our daily lives and stuff but the answers to them should not be written in a layman language it should not be written uh, in a language which has no governance perspective right so then comes the question as to how how should i be writing the answers to the ethics questions the simple you know placebo for this question is write it assuming that assuming that you are a civil servant so this is the trick whenever you write an answer to the ethics paper assume that you are a civil servant and then answer the question when you do that various things will happen you will not be biased you will be following a procedure when writing you know especially the case studies you will be having a governance perspective you will be not thinking from a personal perspective but from an unbiased standpoint of view from the governance perspective from the perspective which tries to do the better for the majority of the people when i say majority i mean to say as many people as possible right at the same time have your supporting arguments supporting uh, evidences basically now what do i mean by that of course the questions of ethics paper asks for my opinion yes of course it does but at the same time whatever opinion i am giving should be substantiated with the supporting evidences how can that be by giving examples by quoting various reports the most important report for ethics paper is your second arc report <coughs> right then other reports of international organizations of ngos reputed ngos so on and so forth the government committees which are formed from time to time right the supreme court's judgment right the various analysis surveys etc which are done so all the answers which you write though it would be your perspective but should be substantiated with these kind of supporting evidences right and at the same time uh, in the flow of the question you should not forget to address all the aspects of the question and the most important thing which we will understand is this ethics integrity and aptitude paper can be completely pre prepared okay so it can completely be pre prepared 
you can prepare for this paper beforehand what do i mean to say by that is that when you will get the upsc question in hand there will be nothing out of the ordinary it will simply be mechanical you get the question you have three hours you just keep on writing what was already pre-decided and you get the marks all right so you will get your 115 plus marks 115 marks for sure on top of that how many you can add will depend on how much you pre prepare for this examination so that is the idea this ethics paper can completely be pre-prepared uh, for example in gs123 you may not know what and how what will be asked but here things can be pre-prepared the entire syllabus very quickly and very easily so you will be ending up getting 115 plus marks now how much plus we can add will depend on how much pre-preparations we do so in this entire ethics integrity and aptitude course we will be doing the pre-preparation in order to get 115 plus marks no matter what provided you follow each and every instruction given in the class attempt all the tests given to you and not just just attempt but whatever the feedbacks are generated and given to you on one-on-one -on -one sessions and when your answers are corrected you if you can ensure that you work on all of them there is no way you will get less than this all right so this is how we will be going through the entire course of ethics integrity and aptitude so just now i said that what happens with ethics is the questions are very generic related to our day-to-day -day life but the answers should be that of a specialist specialist in the sense that you need to write the answers assuming that you are a civil servant so when you do that your answers would be completely different than what the majority are writing and getting less marks right so your answer being different is then gonna fetch you way higher marks than the others and set you apart so let us now with the example of a case study understand what do i mean by that okay so here is a case study which talks about a private company okay so just go through that you can pause the video and go through the entire case study a private company has proposed a large scale hydel power project to tap the potential of a fast flowing river in a state predominantly occupied by the indigenous tribal groups okay it is predominantly occupied by the indigenous tribal groups the state is backward and badly needs funds for socio economic development now though it is predominantly occupied by the indigenous tribal group at the same time the other side of the coin is that the state is backward and it badly needs funds for socio-economic development the state government is deliberating on the issue and is yet to take a final decision now what is the issue over here whether they should go ahead with their hydel power project or not right now further it says that while the project is expected to generate substantial revenue and employment, it will submerge the surrounding areas, eventually displacing the tribals. All right. Another issue of concern is that the tribal community regards this land and the river as sacred and integral to their cultural heritage. Okay. So they are showing the conflict over here. Fine. Thus, the tribals are not in favor of going ahead with the project and are already protesting against it. Their leader has threatened to initiate a hunger strike if the government goes ahead with the project. Now, this has caught the attention of the mainstream media and social activists. Okay, so this is the entire case study which is given to you. Now, further, they ask the following questions. Based on the information given above, answer the following questions. A. Identify the stakeholders involved in the case and their respective interests. B. Keeping in mind the issues involved, how can differ differing interests 
बी रिकनसाइल्ड फॉर एंश्योरिंग सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट इन दी एरिया ऑल राइट सो गिवेन दी एंटायर के स्टडी देर आर दीज टू क्वेश्चन विच आर आस्ट नाउ वाई आर दिस एंटायर के स्टडी दे हैव ट्राई टू टेल एस द कॉन्फ्लिक्स एंड स्टफ एंड एट दी एंड दे हैव आस जस्ट टू क्वेश्चन वन is to identify the stakeholders involved in the case and their respective interests and two keeping in mind the issues involved how can differing interests be reconciled for ensuring sustainable development in the area now with the help of this case study let us understand how first how most of the students end up writing it and then secondly we will go on to what actually needs to be written so first let us understand how the majority of the students uh, write the answer to the case study which was men which is mentioned right and they of course end up getting less marks majority of the students lie in the range of 60 70 80 and uh, 90 probably that's it and a very few can go beyond 100 and even lesser number beyond 110 and 115 right however it is not very difficult all right so let's understand how the majority of the students go ahead with the case study so what were we given to identify the stakeholders involved and in the case and their respective interests that is what is given so uh we are talking about case 1 how majority of the students go ahead with it so the answer starts talking about the stakeholders and their interests because that is what is asked right so basically all the stakeholders are listed down okay so the stakeholders are predominant tribal people and then their interests are mentioned right uh then the people of the state or the other people of the state or the beneficiaries people of the state who will be benefited what are their interests right then there is the government right and then what are their stakes then you are involved also right so you would be talking about yourself in the capacity given right then what are your interests to execute the project right appropriately at the same time then you have the media people so what are the interests of the media people then you have the social activists and what are the interests of the social activists so on and so forth so this is how it's going to be you have written all the stakeholders you talk about their individual interests right and you finish off the first part then comes the second part the reconciliation so in reconciliation generally <coughs> we all you know it may remain sort of open ended but we already know that we what we have to do in this case study what will happen people will decide that anyhow the hydel project will go through so we need to ensure that uh, the tribal people are taken care of right they are uh, you know not displaced without any other option at hand they need to be given certain other option certain other place to live right they need to be uh, located from one place to another so on and so forth this and that all those things would be mentioned right and at the end of the day the hydel project will go ahead right <clears throat> okay so that is what you will be writing probably you will be writing two to three paragraphs on this 
and conclude that you will ensure that the tribals are properly relocated their rehabilitation is done properly it is done before the start of the project itself they are given compensation for their land right so on and so forth everything would be done and so that the and also the benefits of the hydel project also go on to these tribal people etc etc and then you conclude likewise okay so this is how majority of the students write a case study and that is pretty acceptable very acceptable because these are the two questions asked and these are the two answers given to them with proper justifications and stuff but the problem happens when we realize that it is a comparative exam if it was not a comparative exam then okay two things asked two answers given it's not comparative then fine good but it's comparative people raise the bar <coughs> people raise the standards by coming up with more and more things with higher quality with better things with multiple dimensions as a result of which even though this answer actually answers to both the question still would end up getting very less mark around 6 to 7 out of 20 or at times they ask 25 marks of case study so it will get 6 7 or 8 out of 25 right which is very less in fact 6 out of 20 or 7 out of 25 so 7 out of 25 directly comes to be 70 marks in your case study uh, in your entire paper which is not acceptable which will not get you through right so what will get you through 115 or more is what is going to get you through right now let us understand how to achieve this this amount of mark now let us understand how the case study should actually be answered in order to get the amount of marks we were talking about 115 plus right so this would be our case 2 which would give you the required marks okay so we are given the case studies we are asked two questions right we will come on to that questions but before coming on to those question you need to first introduce the case study even though you have been asked two questions directly before going to that introduce introduce the case study introduce the case study as to what it is talking about as to what it is related to what is going on over there introduce it in brief all right we do that in our answers we write introduction the same needs to be done in our case study as well we have to have to mention the introduction we have to and in this introduction we would not be writing the introduction in the manner which we do in gs 1 2 and 3 wherein we related to what we are going to write further right we set a background we give historical background current affairs orientation no that's not what we are required to do here we are rather going to introduce the case study as in you can simply assume in your mind that the case study is written in half or one page long right 100 and 150 words or so on and so forth so what we will do we will make it easier for the evaluator we will sum up that case study in 25 to 30 words and that is what is meant by introducing the case study okay once that is done whether it is asked or not sometimes it is asked in the case study itself as a question but sometimes it is not and when it is not people forget but never forget it make it a habit of what of writing the ethical dilemmas involved you need to mention the ethical dilemmas whether it is asked or not here it is not asked so people forget it do not forget it even if it is not asked you need to mention boss what is the ethical dilemma what is the ethical dilemma which is going on over here for example 
सोशियो इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट वर्सेस ट्राइबल राइट्स राइट ऑल्सो सोशियो इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट वर्सेस वर्सेस व्हाट वर्सेस इन्वायरमेंट राइट दीज आर दी एथिकल डायलेमास इन्वॉल्व सोशियो इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट वर्सेस ट्राइबल राइट्स सोशियो इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट वर्सेस इन्वायरमेंट सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ व्हिच यू नीड टू मेंशन now once you have done these two things then comes the third thing which is to mention the stakeholders and their interests now in some case in this case studies it is explicitly asked it can so happen that it is not asked then what then still you need to mention the stakeholders and their interests is that absolutely clear if it is not as probably you will just list down the stakeholders and one one sentence interest that's it but since here it is explicitly asked you will write each and every stakeholder and discuss or mention the interests in brief in a small paragraph for each one of them because it is explicitly asked all right so what have we done we have introduced the case study we have mentioned the the ethical dilemmas and only then we have come to the answer to what is directly asked which is nothing but the stakeholders and their interests is that absolutely clear so after doing all this after doing all this only we have come to answering the questions of the case study and this is going to get you those extra marks more extra marks are coming but this is very important once this is done we delve into the question talking about the stakeholders and their interests right so what will be the stakeholders the stakeholders simply you can list down right the indigenous tribal people and then you can list uh, they mention their interests what are their interests the land rights the cultural rights the sacred nature with which they treat the land where they it will they belong and for tribals please mention this point that for you and me probably if we are kicked out of our house okay given a compensation we can buy a house somewhere else and i can still come to my job right because my house was my shelter that's all but for the tribal people that's not the case it is not just their shelter it is their livelihood they pluck the fruits and eat they use the minor forest produce so it is not just their shelter but it is also their livelihood their food it is their food clothing shelter everything for us our land and our house is our shelter one of the basic needs for them it is their food cloth and shelter all of their basic need so that point needs to be mentioned over there and that again is going to fetch you the extra mark all right so that is what needs to be discussed over here then of course the other people of the state right then you have the state government of course right then you know of course there there are other things like for example you are going to write about the media you are going to write about the social activists as the stakeholders if you are made you are probably the dsp and all then you will also be a stakeholder if they have in this case study they have not mentioned as such so you are not a stakeholder right so you will write about media social activists and all do not forget the environment the environment is also a stakeholder when the land is going to get submerged when there is a <coughs> dam which is being constructed a hydro project which is being constructed a concrete 
you know concrete structure which is going to come up it is going to have environmental consequences as a result of which you need to mention environment also as a stakeholder the stakeholder need not necessarily be a human you know humans 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 acting as government right humans involved humans involved so the stakeholder need not necessarily be a human it can be the environment as well right so mention that all right so and then discuss what all the interests are definitely that can be nicely done what all their interests are once that is done only then we will move on to the next part of the question now we'll be moving on to answer the second part of the question the second part of the question says that ensuring that the development takes place in the area how you will be reconciling the different conflict of interests right so we are basically going to now reconcile right so we introduced the case study we mentioned these mentioned the ethical dilemmas then we came on to the first part of the question and answered that and now we come on to the second part of the question and we'll answer that we saw that generally what people do <coughs> they jump on to reconciliation between the stakeholders involved different stakeholders you need to think as i said as a civil servant what you can do is there is a problem you are trying to solve it instead of trying to solve it you know you have course have to solve it there is a way to solve it by avoiding that problem itself so before jumping on to the bandwagon of solving or reconciling can we from the beginning avoid it altogether now that also needs to be understood and specifically mentioned in your case study all right because it can so happen that because of your thought process like this to avoid it it may probably be avoided altogether right as a result of which you can talk about forming a committee committee to see whether this decision to build a hydel power project is appropriate or not you can do the social impact assessment right you can do the environmental impact assessment assessment right also you can just check if there are any alternate sites alternate sites such that there is no requirement of displacing any of the tribal people right so alternate sites can be looked for committee to understand whether the decision was objective and right the cost for basically committee for your cost benefit analysis and cost just does not mean the economic but the social cost as well and committee can take help of the various reports also of the social impact assessment the environmental impact assessment so on and so forth so before even jumping into reconciling of what has what is shown in the case study let us try to see if we can avoid it by doing these things so these are the things which you need to mention which will again fetch you more marks and make your answer stand out once that is done uh, so that is that is how your course of action should be uh, you know find trying to find out the alternate site then going for social impact social impact assessment environmental impact assessment then forming a committee to take the help of all these analysis and their own knowledge and stuff to do the cost benefit analysis for the project so on and so forth but then still if the project is supposed to go ahead because let's say there is no alternative site and stuff like that and still you are the committee says it has to go ahead or probably the government pressurizes then you talk about the reconciliation right then you talk about the reconciliation among the various stakeholders 
talking about the you know proper compensation proper uh, you know shifting of the tribal people but not to a very far flung area where they you know find it to be alien right but a similar kind of surrounding so on and so forth and even when you do before that you need to find out their leader and need to discuss with them need to create consensus among them it's very important ensure that the forest rights act 2006 is followed what does it mean the forest right acts require the gram panchayat to basically give an approval only the approval is said to be given only when 75% or more give the approval for ceding their land so that forest right acts need to be followed in letter and in spirit right talking to the leader consensus developing mention these acts and these rights again this is another thing which is going to fetch you the extra mark right then if this is given with the consensus and approval of the stakeholders involved and after following the forest rights act once you follow the forest rights act anyhow the consensus to a very high extent is developed right then still there will be people who will not be satisfied because it may not be unanimous then you talk about the proper rehabilitation right you just need not talk about the compensation but the compensation and training for the utilization of the compensation is very much required i'll just give you an example there was this study done in a village where in the people were given compensation because the government had taken their land they were given some around 5 lakh rupees per hectare or something like that so it was seen that in that village the amount the percentage of child marriages increased why because the moment these poor people got the money and since dowry is so prevalent and since they did not know how to utilize this money they thought the best thing to do is marry off their daughters so even if the daughters are of underage they don't want to marry whatsoever they still married them off so this positive thing of comp compensation actually led to the increase in child marriages as a result of which along with compensation you need to talk about training awareness of how to utilize these compensation all right that is very important again things which generally people will leave this is what's going to fetch you extra marks okay so and these things can be pre prepared all right so you will then talk about all these things and then finally the con reconciliation will take place and with proper and rehabilitation and all that it should not that it will happen after the project no it should start it should start it should in fact be completed before the project even starts or be right so that it is ensured that is done that it is done and then you can uh, try to find out various government schemes which can help in this case and ensure that all of them are beneficiary then you can also talk about when the hydro project will be made if you need any labor power and stuff like that so can these people also be given jobs and stuff right so these are the things which you should be mentioning so this is though it gets hidden people forget this needs to be mentioned reconciliation pro process needs to be linked to other topics of your ethics when you talk about developing consensus it is about attitude leadership and all that right at the same time you need to also ensure that you can take the help of the social activists because they are also involved and at the same time with respect to media what you will do you will sensitize the media so that they do not sensationalize the news and they rather work to create the awareness right so this is how you can Uh, reconcile them and go ahead with the project ensure that the tribals are not hampered and ensure that the development of the area also takes place you can also ensure that these tribals are also the beneficiary of this project uh, are also the stakeholder 
of this project one thing you can do you can um, attach them with the profits which may be generated you can make them the stakeholders give them the equity so on and so forth so there are various things which you can do right so this is how when you write this you are going to get amazing marks in each case study and would definitely be getting 115 plus in your gs4 that is your ethics integrity and aptitude paper